Live from the Ball State News Center, this is NewsLink Indiana in high definition. Good evening and welcome to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Tony Sandlaven. And I'm Brittany Arman. Thanks for joining us. Tonight marks the deadline for voter registration in Indiana. With the deadline set for 11:59 tonight, Democratic candidate Bernie Sanders has made one last effort to establish himself among Indiana voters by opening a new campaign office right here in Muncie. The office was established near Ball State University in an effort to convince young voters of importance of registering. Indiana's primary is set for May 3rd, and one aide on the Sanders campaign not only wants more young voters, but more Hoosier voters in general. Very important because people think that voting doesn't matter, but it does. You've got to vote. I mean, we've had some, one of the reasons we've had a lot of Republicans uh, running the state is because a lot of Hoosiers don't vote. They just don't vote. And I don't know if it's just due to apathy or what, but they really need to get out, get registered, and vote. You can register online at indianavoters.in.gov. Indiana is not the only state on presidential candidates' radars. Wisconsin will be opening its primary polls tomorrow for both Democrats and Republicans. As the races remain tight, tensions are on the rise. Mary Maloney reports. The Democratic primary getting more intense. He wins, we lose. Oh, I know, the Bernie people came to say that. We're very sorry you're leaving. <laughs> Hillary Clinton confronted after a Thursday night rally. Bernie Sanders says his campaign is not lying about Clinton's donations. If people receive money from lobbyists of the industry, I think you're receiving money from the industry. On the topic of abortion, Sanders accused the Clinton campaign of twisting truths. What Secretary Clinton did is take things out of context. I am 100% pro-choice. Clinton holds a significant lead in the delegate count, but after a string of Western victories, Sanders promises to stay in the race. He has the money to do it. His campaign saying it raised $44 million in March. In Wisconsin, polls show him with a narrow lead before Tuesday's primary. Do we love Wisconsin, right? Do we love it? For Republicans, Donald Trump has a wide lead in the delegate race, but in Wisconsin, he's polling behind Ted Cruz. Nominating Donald Trump would be a train wreck. <laughs> IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital is taking precautions after discovering a patient with Legionnaire's disease late last week. Legionnaire's is a serious lung infection caused by bacteria that is commonly found in public water supplies. The hospital shut down and treated its water system yesterday for about eight hours. Since the disease is found in water, the hospital has sent water samples in for testing, a process that could take 10 to 14 days. While it is unclear if the disease came from the hospital's water supply, Ball, Memor Ball Memorial is being cautious because of the risk to patients with weakened immune systems. Today, Highway Superintendent Bob Jesse revealed his road paving plan to Delaware County officials. The plan includes a total of 159 miles of road repairs. Jesse's plan will cover nearly twice the amount of road renovation as last year. Paving projects will include several major roads such as Walnut and Royerton Street. The plan will begin at the end of the month with no timetable for the completion of this project. Now, Tony, hopefully when they start this road renovation project, it will not be as cold as it was today. It was absolutely freezing. <laughs> absolutely. I could barely go to class today because of just how cold it was. Couldn't decide whether or not to put on a sweater or a heavy jacket and that sort of thing. Awful, awful cold. But <laughs> Kaylee is here to tell us hopefully more and maybe this coldness won't stick around much longer. Kaylee? Well, good evening. I'm weather forecaster Kaylee Pluchel. Unfortunately, these cooler temperatures look like they're going to stay for the majority of this week. So you can see currently we're at 35 degrees, winds from the north at 13 miles per hour, but wind chill feels like 26 degrees out there. Now my ride over here, I did see some flurries in the forecast. You can see here Currently at 9 o'clock, we do see some snow showers up in Fort Wayne, a little bit in Muncie, but coming up on my full weather forecast, we are seeing headlines of a warm up for tomorrow, rain chances in the forecast, and I will have your forecast for a cooler weekend. All that and more coming up. The popular music festival Chirp Fest is returning to Muncie this Thursday and promises to be bigger and better. 
Co-owners Darius Norwood and Christopher Kamek first held the music event in September of 2015 and are bringing it back this spring. The music festival, which is now sponsored by Coca-Cola, will feature nine different music acts, including artists from New York and Los Angeles, as well as Ball State students. We wanted to involve the Ball State students also, so we got Jordan Moody, Borderlines, uh, Jimmy Cooper, which is one of our artists, and Kayla Noel. She's actually the pacemate captain, and she actually dances and sings, and she's going to be here also. Um, and then there's a couple other local artists that we'll have, but it's a total of nine acts. The co-owners, who are also Ball State students, say that building this company has been a rewarding yet challenging experience for the both of them. I just sat back just watching these artists perform their set and I just, it brought tears to my eyes. It was just a lot of hard work coming to life. It's, it's still surreal at the moment. Tickets for Chirp Fest are on sale right now at chirpfest.com. When we come back, we'll show you where you can get your house and yard ready for the spring season. And a scandal involving several world leaders involving finances has surfaced. Stay tuned. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. While the temperature today may not show it, spring is in the air. The trees are regrowing their leaves and flowers of the season are beginning to bloom. At Wasson's Nursery in Muncie, it's time to spring into action for the busy season. Shire McDuffie is live at Wasson's to tell us more. The saying goes that April showers bring May flowers, and here at Watson's Nursery, appropriate spring season temperatures can't come soon enough. It's their busiest time of year, and spring cleaning isn't the only tradition that goes on during the rainy month of April. This time of year, people start getting ready to spruce up their yards and gardens. Watson's Nursery in Muncie is dedicated to helping customers with all aspects of outdoor living. The nursery has eight greenhouses that hold various species of flowers, shrubs, bulbs, and more. President of Operations Bob Wasson believes that with a little help, anyone can grow a healthy garden. Secret to keeping a happy garden? Well, um, you don't always have to have a green thumb. It's not, having, it's not being a, a trained gardener or a horticulturalist. Um, I think the biggest issue that homeowners have with, uh, with keeping things alive would be overwatering. For Wassons, spring season starts at the end of the previous year. There's a lot of winter planning, pre-planting, and pre-order. Once the temperature starts to warm up, business starts booming. The garden center shop has everything a gardener needs to keep a happy garden, along with decorations to liven it up. And for those who simply enjoy the colorful decor, the hanging baskets are a best seller. People come to a nursery to look for, basically to, to get expert advice about 
what they want to plant. Uh, um, we try to do a lot of coaching and teaching as we're selling something. We, we want them to be successful so they come back and we feel like that's what differenti differentiates us from maybe some of the box stores and, and uh, larger retailers. Watson's Nursery is a family-run business and all of the employees work together to keep the environment not only beautiful to look at but lovely to work in as well. Being, being able to be not tied behind a desk, being inside, outside, the people that we have working here like um, our greenhouse helper here who loves to sing and, and um, cheer us all up every day. Bob says contrary to those who enjoy a more colorful garden scene, he simply appreciates the green things. Live in Muncie, Shire McDuffie, Newslink, Indiana. Along with a home delivery service, Wassons also offers a personal groundskeeping program. Wassons Nursery is open Monday through Friday, 8 in the morning until 5 in the evening. An Indiana-Michigan power boom truck slammed into a steel beam on Bunch Boulevard this afternoon. The steel beam was made to protect the Norfolk Southern Railroad Bridge, and officials on the scene say the beam did exactly that. A replacement beam will be brought in by Norfolk Southern as soon as possible. This is not the first time a vehicle has collided with the bridge. Officials say a box truck did the same amount of damage several years ago. However, no one was injured during either accident. A massive collection of leaked documents called the Panama Papers have been published by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. These papers allege that a law firm in Panama called Mozak Fonseca helped more than 100 politicians and key figures set up shell companies and offshore accounts, which is legal. But the new report suggests that accounts are tied to questionable activity. Senior reporter Jake Bernstein is one of the reporters who broke the story. He talks about what this means for Vladimir Putin. The implications are, are, are quite interesting. I mean, there has been uh, a lot of speculation about the people around Vladimir Putin and how they've become so rich and what they're up to. The U.S. government has called it a corrupt regime, and they pointed to some of the people who are revealed in the leak as, uh, as being Putin's cashier. And what we see is a network of, of uh, companies and, and banks that shuffle more than $2 billion through... Uh, through these companies and banks, and and it's uh, uh, these people are, are are tied to Putin. We obviously don't see Vladimir Putin's name in the files, um, but it certainly raises some interesting questions for the Kremlin. Coming up, just how long is this cold weather going to last? And find out how a Ball City organization is working to end the use of an offensive turn. Stay tuned. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Emergency plan today. Of all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. 
Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. Now, Brittany, the calendar says April, but it certainly has not felt like it the last couple of days. Even over the weekend, extremely windy, even some snow. I had to drive home in that and even back here. That was awfully fun, but it really has not felt like spring as of late. It really hasn't. And you know, I think we could all go for some spring like temperatures. So, Kaylee, any spring like temperatures coming our way? Well, we could possibly be seeing some spring like temperatures in the middle of this week, but cooler temperatures to start out as you can take a look here at our 24 hour temperature changes. 22 difference in Kokomo, Indianapolis, Champaign, Illinois over there and up to 23 degrees change here in Muncie. Now as we take a look here at our almanac, we do see we're normally around a high of 57 degrees and a low of 37 and our high barely broke that average low. Now we did hit 80 degrees in 1978, which would be pretty nice compared to the cooler temperatures that we did have today. Now your national temperatures here, we do see this jet stream moving through the entire country and this low pressure system up here in Michigan above us. This jet stream is a big um, area of wind and it's to the south so it's keeping those warmer temperatures southern of us as Dallas is at 74 and a little bit cooler up in Kansas City at 57 38 in Minneapolis and 35 here in Muncie and that low pressure system is going to be bringing us some rainy conditions here as you can see current wind chills are 26 degrees here in Muncie 27 in Newcastle so below freezing as it feels like out there now tonight a low of 22 degrees with possible snow flurries mostly overcast skies, but we are seeing possibly a morning frost tomorrow as we do have a freeze warning out from 2 a.m. to 9 a.m. tomorrow. This means you need to bring your plants inside or cover them up and making sure you're bundled up on your commute tomorrow. Tomorrow high of 46 degrees, mostly cloudy skies with lighter winds. So we take a look here at Precision Cast. We do see clear skies for the more majority of Tuesday. Rain chances start to move in on Wednesday and should clear out by Wednesday night, but we could be expecting some more rain chances for Thursday. Now wind gusts are going to be pretty strong with this storm up to 40 miles per hour in some places and rain accumulation could be up to 0.5 inches. So definitely a much cooler. Now your seven day forecast again, clear skies, a high of 46 for tomorrow, 90% chance of rain on Wednesday with a high of 60. So a little bit warmer, but as we move into the weekend, we do see cooler temperatures in the 30s and for Sunday, mild temperatures again and next thunderstorm chances will be mostly on Monday. Definitely not looking forward to that rain forecast there, but hopefully maybe in the weekend some sunshine will will come through. Hopefully we'll see some sun. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kaylee. Now, despite the wind gusts of up to 36 miles an hour yesterday, 170 people showed up to participate in a race in downtown Muncie. Newslink Indiana's Michael Kuhn has the story. Individuals and organizational groups gathered Sunday to run, walk, and bike in the Ball State Best Buddies E-Race the R Word 5K. But Laura Burton says she was there for more than just exercise. To support uh, Beyond I Can, to support the Best Buddy program, to support um, all the individuals in regards to the program, and just to spread the awareness of, to race the R word. In a show of support and solidarity, all race participants and crowd members joined the Best Buddies ambassador in taking a pledge to remove the word retard from their vocabulary. I encourage you today to join me as we pledge to end the R word, the use of the R word. Please repeat after me. I pledge to support. I pledge to support. Best Buddies Vice President Juliana DePoister says this pledge to end the R word is important for one simple reason. Because it's hurtful. It really, we had a buddy that was, they heard that and the R word and they cried. Like, you just, See how much it really hurts people with disabilities when they hear that word and they break into tears because that's how much it hurts them. DePoister says she hopes the race continues to grow next year with the help of Best Buddies and the Muncie community. Good job, good job. In Muncie, Michael Kuhn, Newslink Indiana. All proceeds from the event from the event went to promoting inclusion and spreading disability awareness. Coming up in sports, it was a good week on the diamond as there were two players of the week along with the former Cardinal making his Major League Baseball debut. Also, gymnastics had two top ten finishes at the NCAA Regionals this weekend. That and more when Newslink Indiana returns. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. 
Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know, wherever you are. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Robbie General with sports. After dropping its first game of the weekend in 10 innings, Ball State Baseball bounced back with a pair of high-scoring wins. The Cardinals scored 43 runs over the three-game series against Ohio. Nearly half of those came during the Cardinals' 20-3 series finale victory on Sunday. Softball's home opening weekend saw a three-game sweep of Mid-American Conference rival Ohio. The wins even Ball State's conference record at 3-3. Three three. The women's tennis team also continued its winning ways, extending its winning streak to 14. The 17 season wins ties for the most regular season wins in program history. Ball State still has four regular season matches remaining. Gymnastics also had an impressive showing at the NCAA Regionals hosted by the University of Iowa on Saturday. Top 10 finishes came from Denatia Christian who finished third on the floor with a 9.850 and Bailey Bell who also scored a 9.850 on the balance beam. Good enough for ninth in the event. Junior outfielder Alex Call was named Mid-American Conference West Division Player of the Week today. Call recorded three hits in each of the four games he played last weekend. His batting average was 600 as he had 11 runs scored and 10 runs batted in. Half his at-bats went for extra bases as he recorded three doubles, a triple, and two home runs. Call is currently on a 13-game hitting streak and leads the Mid-American Conference in batting average, on-base percentage, runs scored, hits, and doubles. Senior pitcher Nicole Steinbach earned her fourth Mid-American Conference West Division Player Pitcher of the Week award today. Steinbach pitched in each of the Cardinals' three victories over the weekend, recording two wins and her ninth career save. She opened the weekend with a season-high nine strikeouts and allowed only one run in the team's 2-1 victory over Ohio. She finished the weekend with 15 innings pitch, pitched and struck out 15 Ohio batters while having an earned run average of 1.4. Her 13 season wins puts her tied for 35th in the NCAA for pitcher victories. 2009 Ball State graduate Jeremy Hazelbaker made his Major League Baseball debut yesterday in St. Louis. After seven seasons in the minor league, Hazelbaker finally had his first MLB at bat after coming in to pinch hit for Adam Wainwright in the top of the seventh. He was called out on strikes during the at bat but he talked about how thankful he was at, for the opportunity in a post-game interview. It was a great experience, you know, being in this clubhouse with this group of guys and under this coaching staff, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was a feeling you can't really put into words. But, um, yeah, I, you know, I went out there and performed. I knew I could, and I just was hope, hoping that I got the opportunity, which, you know, I definitely did, and I'm thankful for. So, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was a great experience, and I was glad that I got to open some eyes. The championship game of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament is underway. 
Number two, Villanova from the South region is taking on number one seed, North Carolina from the East. Well, good to see that game continuing on. You know, my bracket was busted after the first week. I had Michigan State winning the entire thing, so that didn't really go my way. Apparently, you called Middle Tennessee State. Is that uh, true? Uh, no, unfortunately, it's not. I also had Michigan State going all the way, so my bracket was busted long before, and uh, March is going to be officially over tonight. Well, it'll be a fun one. Thank you very much, Robbie. After the break, we'll have the latest on pop star Kesha's battle with Sony as it continues on. Plus, find out what celebrity is being sued after this. You got a king? Go fish! Hey, hey, the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self. And I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Billy Lehman with your entertainment news. The Academy Country Music Awards took place in North Texas Sunday night. The big winners for the evening included Miranda Lambert, who captured Female Vocalist of the Year for the seventh time, and Chris Stapleton, who won both the new Male Vocalist and Male Vocalist categories. There was a powerful performance by Carrie Underwood and a duet done by Dolly Parton and Katy Perry. Stars Darius Rucker and Martina McBride paid tribute to the late Joey Feek, who lost her battle with cancer in February. Justin Timberlake is being sued. The famous pop star recently had a lawsuit filed against him by Cirque du Soleil. The group claims that Timberlake used a sample of one of its original songs in his 2020 The Experience album, which released in 2013. The suit, which was filed in New York Federal Court, seeks $800,000 in damages. This process is nothing new to Timberlake. The singer was sued twice by different parties earlier this year. The battle continues for pop star Kesha. On Sunday, the popular singer posted a photo on Instagram saying, quote, I got offered my freedom if I were to lie. She was referring to the sexual and mental abuse allegations that she filed in 2014 against her longtime pro producer, Lucas Gottwald, better known as Dr. Luke. In the post, Kesha went on to say, quote, I will not take back the truth. I would rather let the truth ruin my career than lie for a monster ever again. A representative for Gottwald released a statement saying that Kesha's Instagram post was false and that she had no facts to support her claims. That's all for entertainment. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Billy. Now let's take one final look at weather. You know, we're going to be seeing a lot of seasons this week. A little bit warmer tomorrow, 60 on Wednesday. But for the weekend, we have rain and temperatures in the 30s. But, you know, it's not summer yet. We, on average, our last frost is normally around April 16th. So definitely could see cooler temperatures in April. All right, thank you, Kaylee. Lastly, we thought we would share with you that today is indeed National Hug a News Person Day. So if you know someone working in the news business, give them a big old bear hug and tell them how much you appreciate them. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> That's all tonight.
tonight for News Link Indiana. Be sure to watch tomorrow night at 9 p.m. right here on Cardinal Vision. And be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a great night.